Hello everyone and welcome back to Murph's Models. Today we're continuing our series on Jack Skellington's Christmas sleigh with his reindeer and Zero at the front. Last time we did Jack Skellington. And so for the reindeer this week, we're not going to need much actually because it's mainly a sculpting job. I'm going to do a skeleton for them, a skeleton for their skeleton out of wire. So I have those two wire thicknesses, which is what I need. And the only other thing I need is Sculpey. So it'll all be baked in Sculpey so that it's nice and solid. For Zero, there will be a bit of fabric required, but basically it's just a sculpting job. Easy peasy, they say. Um, except of course, I've got to make three of them. So I have scaled up a picture that I think is about the right size for, for the reindeer. And actually, I'm going to use this guy as my main reindeer to work out the dimensions. These guys and the other guy in front, this guy here and Zero, they will all go in the same dimensions as this guy, my ace number one. As per usual, I've drawn up a bit of a dimensions chart for the various parts of the body. For instance, this here is the backbone for our reindeer and that will hold all the ribs together and uh, I've seen that seen that on here this one here is about like that so that will be the thick wire and then I've also drawn out what I think the size of the rib should be at the front and two in the middle and this one at the back also I've done some measurements for what I think the length of the legs should be, the front and the back. Apart from that, everything else is just so easy. If only that were the case. I've actually found on the interweb some good pictures of what the puppets look like. These are some of the original puppets and photos of some of the original puppets. They all have a wreath at the front, which is also their harness for going back to the coffin and shows the antlers up really well and the heads. So if you're ready to start, here we go. So first up, we're going to create the backbone for the reindeer by using this wire as an armature to hold the whole reindeer together. So here's the two millimeter wire, snip a bit off and then start bending it into the shape. Use your pliers to help bend the wire, especially this thick stuff, but you should be able to use your hands as well to get the right shape. When you're finished, mark it off, mark off where the ribs are and cut it off. There we go. As well as that, we're going to now measure up the one millimeter wire. This is for the back leg. So we're going 1.5 centimeters and 1.5 centimeters and then three centimeters for the lower leg. Um, we're doing both sides at the same time. Now we're going to do the front legs in exactly the same way. What we need to do now is measure the center between the two legs because we're going to wrap the wire around the central backbone using this mark as a guide. So here we go, wrapping it around and pulling it across using that center line as the center so that either leg is either side of the backbone. Just need to tighten it slightly with our pliers and we do the same of course with the back legs as well. So let's have a look at this photo here. So we're doing the leaping legs at the front. So this is where we use the measurements that we've marked on the wire to create the top bone and the central bone and then the bone down below where the hooves end up at the end. We need to make sure that these bends are nice and precise so that we've got plenty of room for doing the sculpt, putting the sculpey over the top. So we do the same for the other leg, slightly different position as per the reference. And then we do the same again for the back legs, bending where we've made the black marks previously. So I thread those two through and just double check that they're going to lay out correctly, front and back, that looks pretty good. Next thing to do, is the ribs. So we have four ribs, 
each slightly smaller than the one before. So we just bend that uh, shape, the curvature on the side. And again, we're going to do a central mark for where we bend the whole rib cage over the backbone like that. And sometimes it's good to use the actual tip of the pliers to help you turn the central pivot around. There we go, we've got that there. We do the same, we snip off the end of that rib and we proceed along the same lines for the rest of the ribs. There we are, we have all four ribs. Now it's time to start sculpting the legs. So they have a longer base, a sort of midsection here, which is shorter and then a taller bit here with the shoulder bone with all the muscle to move the leg around. What I tend to do with this kind of stuff, pop that as a reference nearby the actual leg, but also just do a little roll of Sculpey, cut it off its approximate length like that for here, and then doing one half at a time. We're, not, we're only gonna do half, we're not gonna do it all together because it's too much going on to do both sides at the same time. And then wrap this around here like this. Easy to do really. Okay, then if we look at this, yeah, it's quite thin at the top and got more of a rounded section at the base. So I'm gonna do this back up to the black mark so that the hoof can come in later. And then at the top here, this is going like that. Put a bit more of a squeezy flat section. Okay, so the next section is it's got this bone here. So it gets thicker at the base and then a little bit of a naughty bit down there. So again, cut a bit of this off like that. Yeah, like that. Push this over, around. So maybe take a little bit out of here as well. There we go, a bit of a bone thing happening there. back section here and it's a pretty similar process to doing the front legs actually of course leaving room for the hooves and it's building up the three different bones including the thigh bone there you can even use your scalpel blade to trim them up and there's the finished result and now it's time to sculpt the ribs it's quite flat and thin on the side and at the top we shall put some little pointy bits for the vertebrae that go all along the back. So let's get going. We're only going to sculpt one side of the rib cage at a time. So this side first, then we'll bake it and come back and do the other side. Okay, there we go. And here they are, fresh from the oven and ready to have the second side put on. One, two, three, four. I need to do the hooves for the feet. Let's go, let's get a little bit more of the uh, Sculpey. There we go, hooves for reindeer. I just want to show you what I've been doing here. In between each rib for the reindeer, there is a backbone section. So there we go, there they all are. You can see them on this uh, clearer here. And I'm using them as dividers, these, these little sections between each rib 
All I need is some wire and a little bit of Sculpey. Get it nice and warmed up and soft. Um, put it in my hand there like that. And spread it out. If I wrap that around this wire, which is the same thickness as this wire on the back bones, wrap it around like I have with the limbs. And then roll that on there like that. What I need to do then is with a reasonably sharp tool is to create some divides. So I just turn the around like that. So I go through doing that. The actual Sculpey, when it dries, does dry and shrink the Sculpey slightly. And that's just enough for it to be able to be pulled off the wire, believe it or not. A whole series of backbone sections right there. I'm going to make the head for this reindeer. That is the kind of shape that I'm after with one of my um, rounding off tools. I can pop, there we go, an eye. I've sculpted a head. Now I'm just going to do the lower jaw. So again, get some lovely sculpy stuff and it's going to be sitting under the mouth. So something like that should do the job. Just need to get that shape looking pretty good. Okay. I've actually done the front teeth. Can you see them there? Quite nasty. And now I'm going to put the teeth into the bottom and top. Doing that is reasonably simple because all you need to do is to make up some little tubes of Sculpey and then chop them up into small pieces. Put your four blobs on the lower jaw with a wet brush. Pick up the first uh, tooth for the back of the jaw there and then the second and so on and so on and we continue with this for the top and the bottom jaw so that they start looking quite scary these reindeer so now we're going to make some antlers for the reindeer um, I've already drawn out some ideas but I'm figuring I've done a few different ones here. I'm figuring I'll get the main shape right. I think the wire will be just like this. Well, well, there we go. Just roll some Sculpey out and I might actually put a point on it because we're going to do our first Sculpey including this section here. So that's just with the Sculpey. See if we can do that. Pop that like that on there. cut that off at that point and then we gently squeeze it over and pinch it together there we go got one shape here what I'm going to do now is use this to sort of flatten that inside edge I'm going to do this little bit here put also one inside here somewhere, maybe like that. Now push this in like that. Try and blend this into the main bit of the antler. 
There we go. Now we need to glue these antler in onto the top of the head. They are slightly angled, so they angle out the sides. A little bit of glue on here, 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 on like that. Now we're going to make the wreaths to go around the neck of all of the reindeer. You can see here that the wreaths actually hold the reins between each of the reindeer. They need to be quite chunky. So I'm going to do them in a sort of donut shape, a bit like that. So all I need to do is do the usual tube effect. We turn that around like that, put that in like that. What I will use is this, the end of a toothpick. Basically, if you start jabbing that about, I think that should create the sort of textured effect of what a wreath might look like. On the side of the wreath, I'm going to put some hooks that I made with some of the wire. Two hooks, oh, there's three, there's four. I'm going to shove that into the side, slightly higher up on the side. And now it's time to paint the wreath with a dark green undercoat and then a nice light dry brush over the top. And there you have a lovely wreath. What I need to do is build this next section. And the necks are rather like the rest of the backbone. They are cuckoo cuckoo like that. So here we go. Like all the others that we've done, we need to do a tube of Sculpey. Around about like this. I'm going to need about that much. And what I'm going to do is cut a hole halfway through or a line halfway through the neck section that I will then put over the top of the neck here. And we then wrap it around the wire. And now I think we can start to segment the neck sections. And this will sit in here like that. We've done the neck. I put the head on, I put the antlers on, I put the lower jaw on as well now. I've already glued on the front legs and as you can see it is pretty much as per the illustration. The front legs are leaping. Now what I need to do is put on the rib cage and the back legs and glue those on. Okay, so here are the rib cages for the final assembly. Let's start with the front. And so to glue the last bit on here, and to push the legs out as far as I can while it dries, I need to find a suitable stand to keep the legs in the right position. And this plastic container will do the trick. If I pop it there, the legs out the back there, and put some glue on there, I'm just gonna dabble the glue inside here so that it gets a chance to glue right around those edges. Put a bit of masking tape on here and I need to put a bit of a weight on here. I think probably that old eraser will do the trick. There we go. So I'm gonna let that dry. And here is the dry and complete reindeer body, which does kind of sit in the right place. Now I just need to paint the hooves. And now that I've done that, all I need to do is put this wreath on top. There, like that, and glue on the head. And then this reindeer is done. And push this in here. So now it's time to do zero. Of course, this is a blown up version at the printer. Wasn't working too well. But there we go. The actual scaled version of Zero will measure about nine centimeters and his white cloaky body is about seven centimeters long. From this, I have drawn up a scale version, head about three centimeters, 
So I'm going to do the head out of polymer and possibly the ears out of polymer, but the, the body, the sort of white sheet body is going to be out of some fabric. And of course, he's got a pumpkin nose, which is so small that you'll hardly be able to see the detail, but I'll do that in a nice orange. He does also have a collar. I'm not gonna need that much polymer, really. As always, knead the polymer in your fingers, which makes it nice and malleable. And let's see if we can get a nice shape for him. Do that snout like that. And then his head like that. I'm going to use the opposite end of a paintbrush to do his eyes. There he goes with a bit of a nose on the end. And for his mouth, I'm just going to draw it, literally draw it onto his head using a sculpting tool. Now we're going to do the cloak behind Zero's head. I'm going to do a plasticine mold effectively and then i'm going to cover it with light cotton fabric with glue to make it go hard so i've got a piece of plasticine at the top at the center it's going to be high but then i'm going to put the ripples down the side like this i'm going to do one like that down up down up down Now I'm going to put a bit of foil. This will mean that the fabric won't glue to the plasticine. Now what I'm going to do with some of this linen fabric, I am going to do two layers glued one on top of the other using my usual PVA glue. I've wet this fabric. And now I'm going to lay it over here and push it down to create the shape. And now I'm going to put a second layer of fabric without watering, wetting it down so that it absorbs the glue. And after that, we'll leave it to dry for a while. Here we have a rather strange looking object, a bit like a, like a big beetle perhaps. And this is quite massive at the moment compared to Zero's head. So let's just see first if we can peel it off the foil on the plasticine. And we can. And look at that. It's kept its structure, which is good. Now what we need to do is figure out the shape for Zero. What we need to do is find a piece of cardboard, kind of like that and it's gonna be seven millimeters out. That is seven to about there. Okay, so I think it could be something like that shape. Perhaps even fold it in half. So that is this shape here. So we just mark this off around like that. That's his head. And first of all, we'll just do this main shape, I think. Now we need to make Zero's ears with one of my favorite products. Yes, the Deluxe Blueberry and Blackcurrant Layered Yogurt mm, is delicious. the perfect aluminium foil to use for Zero's ears because all you need to do is paint the aluminium white and then cut it out. So let's do a bit of painting and then turn it over and do the other side. I've already cut out one strip. I'm just gonna try using good old EVA here. And then use this tape. Let's see if I can glue them both on. Is that working? Yeah. Now I've found something that might be just the right scale. For Zero's collar, a red top. All we need to do is slice a section off with a nice sharp scalpel. 
here I have Zero with his ears sorted and his collar put onto the neck and some wire coming out of his head that then holds this sitting upright. There we have Zero. And there's Zero flying off into the deep dark distance. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I really enjoyed doing it. And we hope to see you again soon. One more time, and this time in slow-mo. time on Murph's Models.